Hello YouTube. So it's that time of the year when winter is coming. Um, so now we need to winterize the trailer. So I'm going to take you through the process on a Keystone Bullet. Now this model is the 243BHSWE. So 243 and that's 24 feet. Not sure what the three's for. This is the bunkhouse model, so it has the bunk beds at the back. Um, SWE, I don't know what that's for. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, got some stuff together and uh, take you through how this happens. So in my trailer, I kind of have this water station here where I control different valves from the water pump and the hot water tank. So there's two valves here. One is the water heater bypass. The other one is the winterized valve. So the water heater bypass, all that does is instead of when you flick on the pump inside, it's not gonna send water into the hot water tank. It's actually gonna bypass it. And so you complete a circuit and all your water will still work on all your faucets and everything, but you will not get any hot water. And the reason that's important is when you're winterizing, you don't wanna put in your um, antifreeze into your hot water tank. So you gotta put the bypass on. I don't know if you notice here, but these, I don't know if someone on a Friday put these things on and these labels, but they don't work at all. So um, we kind of lined it up here. This is the bypass is on now. So bypass your water here, the winter eyes. So the, the pump inside, it would normally draw water from your fresh water tank. You can turn this valve so now it doesn't suck from the fresh water tank. It'll actually suck from this tap here. And what I did from there is you grab a small piece of hose, thread it into here, and you can put that right into your antifreeze bucket or antifreeze jug. And then when you flick on the pump, it's going to start drawing the antifreeze right out of the jug into your system. And with the hot water tank bypassed, it's going to put antifreeze into all your lines. So what I like to start with first is I will drain my fresh water tank. So mine is underneath, if you can see that blue line there? Oops. Sorry about that. That's a fresh water tank. So we'll make sure there's no water in there. Um, Cause if you do have water pooled at the bottom a little bit, I usually leave the cap off for, for the winter. Um, it can freeze and crack the bottom. Next thing we need to do is the, the black tank flush. Now, the antifreeze, when you put it into your system, will not go to the black tank flush. So um, potentially there could be water in there. It's best to get it out. So the way to do that is you get this blow off or blow out adapter. So it threads in and then you just hook up your compressor like a normal Schrader valve um, tire inflator on there set your compressor to 30 psi roughly and just blow that out it'll go right into the black tank so that's the way to do the black tank flush these are these are cheap you can get them at canadian tire anywhere five bucks something like that so with the your hot water tank bypassed now you want to take pressure out of the system um so to do that you just come inside have your faucet and turn it on. Oh, I can run in the pump still. Turn it on and take the pressure up. And make sure you do it both hot and cold. Okay, now that you have no pressure, then you can start to work on the hot water tank. So the hot water tank, you're gonna wanna take out the anode rod. So let me show you the hot water tank here. Now I, I did this already before I filmed, so I don't have any pressure in there, but so the hot water tank, it's normally behind a grill or grate that looks like this. So what you do is you get in there and you take this off. 
And then if you look in here, so what you're looking at here, so this is your blow off valve. So if it gets too high pressure, it's gonna blow out through there. And then here's where the anode is. I've already taken mine out, but I'll show you that in a second. So when you first get over here, after you've taken the pressure out of the system, go over here and you can pop the blow off valve. You lift up this tab and you'll, once you lift it all the way up, you'll hear the air rush out, and psh, just a little bit of air. Make sure you do that before you start taking out this rod. I did it one year, I started taking out the rod and it shot out the rod once you got onto that last thread. So that was a lesson for me. This is your anode rod. So this one's, you can see it's already started to grow. There's only one season on this. You might, I can get another season out of this, but that's about it. One, two seasons max out of these things. Um, especially we have hard water. So they, they fit in here. And the idea behind the anode rod is that this rod is what is what is going to corrode instead of your tank. So you want this to corrode. That's what it's supposed to do. But you got to make sure to replace it. Otherwise, once you start, once this is no longer corroding, it's going to start eating through your tank. So once you've taken, you've relieved the pressure, you got to take out this anode rod. So to take that out, I think they're all pretty much the same size. You need a one and one sixteenth socket and then get an extension on it and then you get in there undo it and what i do right there, i'll take it right out i'm going to leave it out all winter so i'll just put it right there and that way in the spring i'll come find it so after that the other thing you can do the hot water tank is when this thing corrodes a bunch of pieces and chunks of uh, whatever that stuff is and calcium everything it, it builds up in the bottom of the tank I get this little wand you hook it up to your hose your garden hose and you can shove it right inside and it's got a valve on it so it's nice so you can turn it on and off you get in there and you kind of clean the inside of your hot water tank and all you'll, you'll see a bunch of stuff that will start will come out of your tank I don't know if you can kind of see where I clean there's white specks everywhere that's all uh, from the, the rod there and everything. So, yeah, get one of these. They're great. Shove in there, clean out your tank. Once it's all cleaned out and you're not seeing much stuff come out of there again, get your rod back and then your hot water is done. Okay, now your, your hot water tank is all done. You don't need to worry about that. Now we need to start getting antifreeze into our lines. And I will say, so the hot water tank, my bypass valves are here in this station. If, you have to find out where your hot water tank is and that's where your valves are typically gonna be. I know what we had last trailer was an R pod. We, I actually had to lift up the bed. That's where the hot water tank is and that's where I found all the valves. So you gotta find the hot water tank, find those valves. That's important before you start doing this. So I cut a piece of hose, just a regular garden hose fitting. And I'm gonna put this on my winterized thing, so where it sucks in. So I'm gonna put it on here. Okay, that's that's on there. And then what I'll do is I'll shove this end right in a jug. So I buy Canadian Tire, buy a case of this stuff. Um, you probably go through two jugs, maybe three. I always just buy a case, you never know. So I can leave this here. So now when I turn on the water pump inside, it's going to start sucking through this hose into the trailer. Let's go into the trailer. So we're back in the trailer now. So you got to find your, so you can find the, the water pump here. So We'll flick that on. You can hear the water pump going on and now we'll open up the, the faucet here. So the faucet, now you gotta wait for it to pressure up. It's gonna suck out of that jug. You'll hear it start to pressure up here.
There we go. Now it started to suck out of the. There we go. And then you wait, and you blow out the air, and you wait for uh, for it to go from clear to pink. So once it goes pink, you do you do the cold side, the hot side, each time, just waiting for it to go turn pink. Then you go to your bathroom faucets. Oh, I've I've already done this. So you go to each tap, hot, cold. Make sure you do your shower. Do it hot and cold. Turn it on. Let it run out. Now I've already done this. You can kind of see there's some pink already on the floor. And also important, run it through the the shower. So turn it on, pull out, and wait for pink to come out of there too. And then the toilet. Make sure to put some pink. Just press the, the foot pedal valve until it fills up and you see some pink in there. And there will be water in there. It's sometimes people miss that one. It causes issues. The other thing inside here, so I like to, I always make sure to leave my fridges and freezers open. Turn them off, but make sure they can get air. Uh, all, the water will get in there and if you close them up and leave them for winter, um, they will get very moldy on you. So I always just put a cloth there and then that way they don't close. So I'll leave those like that. And that's pretty much it for winterizing plumbing system. Um, you've done your hot water tank. You've done all the lines now, have them in there. The other thing to find is your low point drains. So we'll go find them. Usually they're marked on the side of the trailer somewhere. Let's see. Black tank, gray tank. Hmm. No low point. Well, this is the first year I've done this one, so I'm going to take a peek underneath. Usually. Oh, there they are. I don't know if you can see them. I've got to go to the other side. Those are the low point drains over there. One sec. Okay, we're underneath the trailer now. And here's the low point drains for this trailer. So there's a blue and a red one. So those are your cold and hot. So what you do is you take the cap off and Ooh. Let her drain out. Hopefully it's pink. This one's pink already. You can smell it. There you go. And I'm going to leave those off for the year. So that'll just drain out slowly. Those are going to stay off. So yeah, you got your fresh water tank. You take off the drain plug on that one. And your two low point drains. Take off the plugs on those. So then after you're done, you can just pull the, the jug out there. And then take your hose off. I'll put you guys down to do that. So I, I typically leave these three end caps there from the low point drains. Just leave them right in here. You'll find them next year for spring. Now clean out if there's any pink or anything in there, because um, it will leave a little mark where when it dries out there. So I like to just wipe it up. There we go. Now, some people do put some pink down in their fresh water tank. Now, I, I took the drain valve off. I've never done it before. And of course, it kind of keeps the, the taste down so it's not mixing into your fresh water tank when you do fill it up next year. So, not going to do it. But you can. And after that, close this up. That's pretty much it for the plumbing. 
so for this trailer when you when you do put it away um, so it's always important to check make sure your gas is turned off so turn those both off you have two tanks on there typically turn that down the other thing is your your battery um, so typically give it a good charge before you put it away and then this one has an external disconnect switch so you just turn it off and then it disconnects the battery so all your um, co2 detectors and stuff like that not going to drain your battery especially in the cold you want to keep this battery topped up as much as you can so what i usually do is you know maybe a couple times a winter i'll plug the trailer in turn the disconnect back on give the um, battery just a little bit of a charge my previous trailer didn't have the disconnect switch externally so what i would do is i'd pop in and i'd pop the negative off the terminal so essentially disconnecting it so either way you want to make sure your battery is disconnected otherwise it is going to get depleted and then if you do get a big cold winter it's, it's going to freeze up on you it might not work so that's pretty much it we'll clean up inside make sure there's no food in there um, we're actually going to set a few mouse traps in there just in case damn mice you, you don't want them in there but if it does happen you want to make sure there's a trap there or something so always check your trailer yeah that is how you winterize the plumbing system on a keystone bullet 243 bhs hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something and we'll talk to you next time